Hello beautiful people, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Muna Dior and this is Castle Chaps where we talk all things from interior design to home and everything in between. In this video, I am going to give a full breakdown on how to make your home feel and look cozy. By the end of this video, you would have learned how lighting, color and textures can be strategically used to make your space feel cozy. You will also learn how to make larger spaces feel intimate and inviting. 1. Let's start off right at the doormat. As you walk into your house, you want the first feeling you get to be, yes, I am home and I can finally relax and forget all the crazy things that happen during the day. Therefore, a fitting welcome is a cute doormat that matches your interior design style. If you're more relaxed and easygoing, a stencil donut will work, but if you're the type that wants to look a bit more put together and sophisticated, then you can consider layering the rugs to create a really interesting combination which is also sophisticated. Whatever you end up going for must be unique to you and remember that what you go for will set the tone for what to expect and what will come inside the home. Two, so now we're done with the domet and we're inside the home. Here, as the first step, you're in the home. You might want to consider coming up with a dedicated space which you can remove your shoes, hang your jacket, store your keys, and so on. This is also a great way and opportunity to make your guests feel at home by offering them some home shoes. If it is customary where you live to remove shoes indoors, this is definitely the case where I live here in Germany, that people remove shoes when they are entering the home, be it theirs, somebody else's. As I've been a guest in a lot of houses, one thing that I've always deeply appreciated was when the host offered some house shoes for me, you know, so that my feet wouldn't get cold when walking barefoot inside their home. I immediately felt at home, I felt happy, and I could warm up to the house and lead to that guest feeling. To be honest, between me and you though, I should really be taking my own advice because until now, I don't have any home shoes to offer to my guests. So this is a note to me to really take my advice and look for those house shoes to offer my guests when they come home. The shoes that you offer the guests don't have to be something extra bargain or expensive or extra special. Just think some simple slides or sneakers that will definitely do the trick. Three, color palette. Now we are really in the depth of the home. The choice of color that you make in your home is very important. In fact, colors are known to have a very big impact on our mood and hence you have to make an optimal use of colors in your home. But before you get to the point of choosing the color palette, there are a few things that you have to do. You have to, for example, think about the purpose of the room. This is because different colors evoke different emotions. Think about excitement. A nice, colorful orange or yellow will give you that feeling. On the other hand, peace comes from green or blue. Passion, think red. Tranquility and peace and calm, again, brownish tones and green will give you that. Colors can also make a space feel larger, warmer or cozy and they can even be used to illuminate a dark space or even to inject some energy into a rather static area. 
So firstly, understand the functionality of your space. Ask yourself the following questions. What really is the function and purpose of this space? What mood do I want to create in this space? How do I want people to feel? And lastly, which colors will help me to achieve this mood that I want to evoke within this space? If you need more information on how to choose the perfect color palette for your bedroom or your living room or even your entire home that are cohesive and that work for you, then I highly recommend you to watch this video which is dedicated to colors within your interior design. Four, scent. As you must have realized by now, great interior design is about creating and evoking emotions and sensations to the people who are using that particular space. You can achieve this by making use of the senses, especially three of the senses, namely sight, through visual stimuli, touch, through tactile stimuli, and the sense of smell by olfactory stimuli. Scents and smells are some of the biggest stimuli to humans. And yet they are usually overlooked when people are thinking about the overall design that they want to incorporate into a space. Actually, scientifically, it has been proven that scents trigger and reinforce memories more in humans. This means that when a memory is paired with a scent, there is a greater chance that it is stored in long-term memory. This is amazing. Scents can also affect people's moods, so be sure to use the correct scent in the correct room. What do you want your guests to experience the moment they walk through your front door? Whatever that impression it is that you want to achieve, a smell can equally make a great first impression as much as your visuals do. So it's important to get both the visual and the olfactory aspects correct. Imagine something warm and welcoming within your entryway, but you don't want it to be overpowering such that it repels the person who is entering for the first time. Sandalwood, vanilla, and cinnamon are great choices for your entryways. Now imagine after a long day of work, you are out and about, all you really want is your private space to really calm down and to relax. Your bedroom can provide you with that. And the sense that you use within your bedroom more so should therefore not be too sweet, nor should they be too energizing because this will go against the mood and the feeling that you're trying to evoke. Lavender is a naturally soothing scent which contains some very calming elements and will work best in the bedroom. Scents can also be used according to the season. For example, we are currently in summer and I like to have something fresh and light on the nose perhaps with some citrusy elements within it to really keep it fresh. But in winter, on the other hand, you might prefer something a bit more musky and comforting like cinnamon, vanilla, or caramel. Five, a mixture of old and new. I really love new things. I enjoy shopping thoroughly, I have to admit. And that occasional run to Ikea really gets me going, where I get to pick up a few new things. In fact, you can read a review I did of the Ikea Zodenham sofa, which is right behind me on my blog. Link in the description box below. However, an important element to creating a cozy home is making your home look like it is lived in. This is usually tricky to achieve if everything is new, perfect, sparkly clean. This will really look like, you know, it's straight from a furniture shop showroom. So to break down that perfect look that new furniture gives and give your space more personality, what you want to do is to mix and match new things together with old things. This can be 
anything from small family heirlooms that you perhaps inherited or other thrifted finds that you can find on Facebook Marketplace or on the Craigslist. The key here is to mix new and old to create a comfortable, lived in and cozy look. I personally like to add some cultural elements like finger baskets and some stone cultures just to break up that rigidity of having brand new things within my space. Six, light bulbs. I am a big fan, hands down, of playing around with lighting within your home. At this point, I know I sound like a broken record, but honestly, lighting should always be layered in a room in order to make it feel cozy and inviting. Lighting can really change the way a room looks and feels, and it can even change the perception of a color. Depending on the light that you're using, some colors might appear to be brighter than they actually are or duller than they actually are. So before you pick a new light bulb, I want you to keep in mind two things. One, lumens. Lumens is the measure of how much light that you're getting from the bulb. So to even put it more simply, lumens is how bright or how dull a light bulb is. Basically, the more lumens that you have from a light bulb, the brighter the light. Personally, I like to keep the range around 750 to 800 lumens to be good for a light bulb, especially if it is covered or recessed. But for an exposed bulb, like the ones that I have overhead, or even in the kitchen, I really prefer a lower value within the ranges of 210 to 250 lumens, meaning it's not so bright. The second thing that I want you to keep in mind is Kelvins, and this is the temperature of the light emitted. You will probably recall that some light bulbs may look very warm and may even go along to the orangey or yellowish color range, like for example the typical Edison bulb. But some bulbs also look very bluish and cooler in color. For example, think some fluorescent lights. This is what Kelvins basically are. And the good thing and most important part is that you have power over that. Kelvins normally range from a scale of 1000 for the lower values to 10,000. But for household use, the range is usually between two to 5,000 Kelvins. So as mentioned earlier, the color of your bulb can affect everything in the space, even how color looks in a room. So it is important that you really get it right. I usually stick to anything between 2700 and 3000 kelvins. This really helps me achieve a clean light which is still inviting without being too warm and harsh or too sterile like an operating room. 7. Adding in textures. Like colors can affect mood and how warm or cool the space feels, textures can equally influence the person in the same way. Textures are usually used to enhance the overall appearance of the room and thereby detecting how the room will feel. Textures like colors can be divided into warm textures and cold textures. For example, raw, natural and rough textures are more likely to give a space a cozy and intimate feel because they reflect less light. This makes the surfaces feel more rustic and with more visual interest and weight. It's these kinds of textures are on the warmer side. On the other hand, we also have cold, smooth or shiny textures, think glass or mirror or steel, which make a space feel cooler but with a sophisticated feel. Some textured materials are a big commitment. For example, the wallpaper that you choose, the towels that you will use, or even some finishes, for example, the metal finishes on your cabinet drawers. However, if you would want to add texture without making a big commitment, there are ways that you can add depth and interest. You can do this by adding some throws, some pillows, area rugs, baskets, candles, and even plants can be used to add texture 
in your space. Eight, creating comfort zones like reading rooms. If you have a large space or a large room, you can make it feel more intimate by breaking it down into smaller dedicated zones with different uses. So for example, if you have a very large living room, you could break it down into different areas like the TV area where watching TV is the purpose. And then in another area, you can have a section which is dedicated to talking with seats that are facing each other to foster conversation. And then in another area of the living room, you can have perhaps a perfect reading nook. If you want to make that reading nook really considerate, there are some elements that you need like a comfortable armchair. If you have a bay window, then consider even having a window seat. To protect your eyes when reading in the darkness or in low light, always remember to incorporate a really good lamp, which is standing or however you prefer. You can then have a basket next nearby where you can store your blankets and your pillows to keep you comfortable and cozy. You can even have a side table to hold your drinks or even extend your legs and place them on top when you want to relax. To summarize today's video on how to make your home feel cozy, remember to use visual, tactile and olfactory stimuli to create a great design experience. Color, light, texture, and scents are all among the things that can affect your mood and impact how you feel within the space. So always be aware of how you can use these factors to your advantage. Lastly, if you have a large space or a large room, always remember that you can make it feel more intimate and cozy by breaking it down into different zones with dedicated uses and functions. I'll catch you in the next one.